The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Weekend Podcast. Mm. Joined by uh, Pete there and Steve there. Well, mm. Pete's there and Steve's there, actually. Oh, yeah. Hi. I'm, I'm, I'm over here. Yeah. Mm. He's That's on it. the left speaker, and he's on your right. <laughs> mm. Unless you've got a mono speaker, and they're right in the middle of you. Right in the middle. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, Paddy's not here again. No. He pretends, you know, he pretends he's doing work and stuff. Yeah. Which is any old excuse. Yeah, he's he's rarely here. We need yeah. to threaten him taking his name off the podcast again. I think that's when he comes back, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Without well, Paddy. Well, no, didn't yeah, they? he's he's rarely here, and yet we all get paid the same. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it on Twitter yesterday. I don't think many people got it. They got a couple of likes. But I said, um, Storm Dudley, what do you think about that then? Storm Eunice, hold my beer. Because <laughs> see, yeah. Storm Dudley, Dudley, yeah. you know, in the week. Yeah. Ba- we barely noticed it, didn't we? Have you been, no. uh, have you had a bit of wind today, boys? Oh, it's, Ooh, it's yeah. been windy pops down in Wales. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's been windy pops, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so he, he almost got blown off, didn't you, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> chance of me finding close, close. You know, yeah. <laughs> just close again <laughs> but um, <laughs> a tr- no but a tree came down just across the road from us my and, tree uh, came down as well Fred and Monty were loving it in the garden <laughs> Lo- loving it L- loving it very right have you seen those training parachutes you can strap to your back and run yeah Monty had that on jumping up on the trampoline he-, he wanted to get blown away almost you know it- it's, uh, kids love it don't they yeah so <laughs> get, in the- get in the house you fool Monty was yeah. bare- barefooted with the rain coming down dancing on the patio what is wrong yeah. with you? I think they're boarding on symbol. Of course, they're, they're, this, they're this side of the, the symbol border. They're way within the symbol border. But mm, there's mm. kids. Kids go nuts with, um, weather. with with weather, with wind especially, yeah. apparently. Because my mother used to be a teacher and said, apparently, when there's high wind, yes. I, I heard this on Radio 5 as well, when there's lots of wind, kids go mad. I've Yeah, I've heard that. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Why is that? I don't what, know. Well, some people say it's just, uh, some people say it's, it's the pressure thing. It, you know, it's a change uh, in pressure. Messes up their brains. But why afraid... kids? Not why not everybody? I mean, it'd be funny if all adults were like that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really <laughs> loved it. Windy. Literally, everybody just went nuts. You know, Megan bought a torch yesterday, a big torch, because there's a chance of power cuts. So she went out and bought a torch. Well, Monty... she did anything, any excuse yeah. for a fire. <laughs> <I> know, anything <laughs> to buy. Yeah. I know, yeah. Anything to buy. But then um, Monty kept in his bedroom and said, Dad, will you wake me up early? I said, what for? Because it's power cut. I said, Mont, it's not something to get excited about. <laughs> well, just wake me up early, yeah? <laughs> so literally, he's up, he's up a f- he's no school today. Up well, five, like Christmas, but yeah, after five, to, yeah, after five to seven, come down with his torch on. <laughs> I said, Mont, <laughs> we still have power. What are you doing? He said, fine, it's fine. He said, are we going to have a power cut? I, I, I had to give him a cuddle. I said, come here, you simple fool. I mean, it's not <laughs> something to get excited about, power cuts. We can't do work, can't watch telly and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Be, uh, go, I got my torch ready though. That's the main thing. So um, yeah. Yeah, they love it, don't they? Ah, oh, dear. What yeah. I was more concerned about, I don't know if you saw that. I, I did um, actually reply to the BBC on, on Twitter there, but um, Kit Kat and Durex um, makers. I saw that. Yeah, a warning yeah. of a price rise. And I thought, well, that's made my Friday night more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. You, you do like your chocolate, to be fair. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, most yeah. people thought it was a sexual reference. Now, what happens is, I have, mm. you know, you get the four fingered bars of Kit Kat. I, eat, yeah. I, eat, I have two fingers, right. and then to keep the other two fresh, I put them in a condom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's doubly expensive. You know, I've got Kit oh, Kat yeah. and condoms mm. going up in price now, so oh, I can't have that. Right. Yeah. Mm. It's a funny taste of it. They are fresh, but it's, it's, the mm. taste isn't nice. Do you, get, do you get the, the flavoured condoms? <laughs> yeah. Like a bit. Maybe a bit of strawberry to your chocolate. Yeah, strawberry yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Put your two fingers in the condom. That's it. Two chocolate fingers in your condom. Oh, dear. <laughs> right, let's get it out of the gutter. Right, stocks and shares. Oh, yeah, sorry. It is about stocks and shares. There we go. I was just thinking, right? I don't like this, you know, use vulgar language on the podcast because, yeah. you know, it's a family show. People sit around with their Christmas jumpers on listening to the podcast every Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was thinking, who is the biggest dickhead, right? Out of Putin... Or Prince oh. Andrew this week. Right. I mean, cause I'm thinking, right. they're both uh, dickheads, aren't they? Let's be honest. I, yeah. I, 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 I just find the whole title of Prince absurd. I think it's fine for Disney films, you know, cartoon animation. <laughs> yeah. But in real life, what are we doing? What are we doing with these titles anymore? You know, oh, the prince is coming to town on his white horse. Oh, maybe he'll marry me. 
No, you won't, Jeff. But what's the point of that? <laughs> what is it? What, I, mean, what, I mean, you get these people, these you know, spineless, yeah. big-eyed people standing by a little balcony and bucking. Oh, they're waving at us. We're so lucky for them to wave at us. Then what are you doing? Mm, mm. Go home. Yeah, Do something yeah. constructive. We yeah. cannot have a fair and equal society if there's a big family at the top there just raking in millions. And you just, I, mean, I, I, I did see that thing. You see, the, for, the former Duke of York, he had 10 million quid or 12 million quid. He gave mm. it to someone he didn't remember for something he never did. And I thought, yes. true. <laughs> he, he's what an honourable man he yeah. is. He didn't meet yeah. her. He didn't commit a crime, but he gave her 12 million quid. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and there's Putin oh. as well. He's, he's up there with, the, with you know, yeah. Yeah. what's he doing? I, I Who just, knows? I know. It's a, he's not going to attack, is he? I, I did a Twitter poll, actually. I said, Will, will Russia, because that's the biggest, you know, the, 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 the biggest effect on the market at the moment. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, you know, we're touching shares here. Care, careful. <laughs> we're getting into oh. investment, investing. <laughs> wait wait but, a minute. You know, but that's the biggest effect, you know. Putin just, I don't know what happened there. It's people who are withdrawing troops. And then people said, no, he's not withdrawing. He's, he's putting them close to the border. They've got 130,000 troops around Ukraine. No, 190,000. Is it? Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's the now. biggest build-up since World War II, apparently. And I'm thinking, and exactly, in Britain, right? Have a guess how many troops we have, our army in the UK? Uh, probably about... Uh, 700,000. No, about 50,000. 700,000. 50, 50, 50, Higher. <laughs> Higher than 50,000. Higher than 50,000. 80,000. No. No, yes, yes, spot on, 80,000. Okay. 80,000, right. yeah, yeah. I've so, got so, my 700,000 now, haven't I? So they've got... They've got 700,000 700,000, even America hasn't got that, Steve. But, but they've got... The yeah, they've got... in the UK um, work for the army. Yeah, yeah. So they have okay. got uh, literally double the amount of troops around the Ukraine than we have in existence in the UK. But, uh, so I did a trip poll. Will... Russia invade Ukraine, and uh, I think 71% said no, 29% said yes. And, and someone pointed out, said, well, why would he do it now? Why, when the world is watching, he's building up, and he's, he, it's a public show, isn't it? That's yeah. what he's That's doing. That's what he wants, isn't it? Yeah, he wants to attract attention. He's almost like bombing now, is he? Because they're denying all bombing. And now they're going to carry out a ballistic and cruise missile test tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're just testing, exercising. It's just a scare tactic, isn't it? Cause he doesn't... Do, do you understand why he's doing the, what he's doing? Any, any idea? Well, uh, no, just for other than just for a show, a show of strength and a leaning on the neighbour um, that he wants to ultimately control. Uh, yeah, but leaning no. on the neighbour, it's a bit over the top, isn't it? It's like, it's like my neighbour, yeah. my neighbour's Daphne, she's 90. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like me jumping on top of her, from, you know, at, well. And, you need to and, stop doing that as well. I know. <laughs> she's 90 yeah. after all. I know, so, I know. Honestly, sort yourself out. Mm, come on. But um, I did pass on your gag, actually, Pete, to, uh, to uh, Lee down the road because he knows Daphne because of uh, you know, Lee's African. Oh, in fact, that's, we could talk about that. Uh, that's not investing, but uh, well, it's, it's a bit about investing. The, the Six Nations, Seven Nations, maybe. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, Pete's gag on WhatsApp, mm. I, I changed it a bit. I, I, I you know, personifies it a bit. So I said, uh, Pete said, um, terrible weather here. So I've just visited my 90-year-old neighbour to see if she wanted anything from the shops. Turns out she did. So I gave her my list too. No point is both going out in this storm, is there? So uh, I said that, you know, my Daphne, she said, hey, cracking. Uh, but listen, uh, okay, you, before we get a bit more into, into investing, just one more thing, because it is money related. Um, the Six Nations, there's yeah. rumours in the week that uh, South Africa may join in. And in fact, they, they'll replace. People said, why not just add? And says, I think they're going to replace Italy, you know? So, and everyone's, so everyone really against it on Twitter. So really? nothing, yeah, I swear, the people I saw were saying, nothing wrong with it, it's not broken. What are you trying to fix it for? It's one of the greatest, you oh, know. The, the Italy's inclusion is ridiculous. I know it is. And I was thinking, what are you talking about? Yeah. They get hammered every year. There's no competition yeah. with them involved. They're not improving. And I thought, but to be fair, I felt a bit sorry for them. I said, why not get, you know, just add South Africa so then mm. every year we, we can watch six teams hammer Italy <laughs> rather than five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but no, I think I, I really think we should, in, you know, in, include a better team to l raise the standard, you know? But um, I don't know if Italy should be there. But they're saying well, it's, it's all yeah, about or, money, don't they? Yeah. 
either that or go back to five nations, but that feels like a step backwards. So, um, yeah, no, but one of the the rising nations to give somebody else a chance, like Georgia or Romania or some of these, you know, maybe Japan even. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. we should do that some years. This year, we're adding three teams. This year, we're taking away two. It's a bit like, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the, the two nations. This, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's not, so, uh, not so enthralling. It's just yeah. a couple of games. Apparently, CBC, the investors, they put like uh, a couple hundred million in pound in, didn't they, in Six Nations a couple of years back. And they say they want now to up it a little bit and get some money in there, all that stuff. So well, that's what it's about. It's money. It's always money, isn't it? It's always money. No, it's always money. Even Putin is mm. about money. Yeah. You know, oil price goes uh. up, gas price goes up. He, that's oh. that's what he's doing. That's why he's doing it, because like uh, yeah. oil and ga- oil is like ninety five bucks, almost a barrel. Yeah, I'm a barrel. But, you're steering towards finance and stocks yeah, and shares yeah, yeah. again. <laughs> no, but I'm saying when it comes down to it, I remember someone saying once this CNBC guy said he wanted to go into journalism, and then he wasn't particularly in money, but he realised, in fact, money is behind anything, everything, pretty much, you know. Yeah. In this society, so if you want to do anything, follow the money, and it is. It's you know, Pu- they say Putin's one of the richest guys in the world, don't they? Do they? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. How has he made his money? Because he was in the KGB, wasn't he? Well, he just he kills people, didn't he? Otherwise, he'd give, him, he'd give him money, or he kill, kill you. As simple as that. You know, oil and gas guys. You know, the oligarchs. Uh, well, Jeff, uh, Jeff Oligarch uh, alleged, and, allegedly yeah, Jeff Oligarch and Barry Oligarch uh, those guys so, <laughs> so how did the you... Oligarchs yeah. <laughs> it's I a family of people <laughs> imagine the family of the Oligarchs please meet the Oligarchs it's, it's they're very boring. well off uh, yeah. go on Steve I was going to say what, what's the history because it was Boris Yeltsin who was the uh, president there before wasn't it is that right <laughs> yeah well there's been a few presidents but, yeah we wanted to go oh, no, to no, Charles no, oh, that's, okay. that's the Soviet Union, wasn't it, back in the day? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, but the thing is, Ukraine was part of the, of the USSR, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. So it, it flew out, in, I think, in, I think uh, independence, and there's a lot of Russians in Ukraine, uh, and there's a lot of people who want to be back with Russia and all that stuff, but mm. Ukraine want to join NATO. And the majority is not Russian people there, and I think they want to join NATO. And, you know, uh, Putin feels surrounded by NATO, and so he's showing a force strength, and he wants them not to join NATO. Otherwise, there'll be NATO countries all around him. He doesn't like that. He, he likes his space, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we're talking about rich guys. You, you pointed this out. I saw this uh, as well. But uh, investors are being urged to vote against a $99 million pay package awarded to Apple boss Tim Cook last year. Yeah. So um, they're going to give him... Uh, it's up. It's up f- almost fifteen million dollars in a year. <laughs> mm. that's, wow, that's nuts, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's done quite well, I suppose. But I mean, they should give him like I don't know bonuses and you know iPads or I- iPhones. Yeah. Right. All, the, all yeah. the iPhones you can sell, Tim. Just set up your little website, <laughs> timcook.com. And just, yeah. you know, he gets them for free <laughs> <laughs> and he undercuts Apple. <laughs> so, I wouldn't, anyway, uh, okay, stocks and shares, boys, stocks and shares, stocks right. and shares. Okay. Um, so, fact, most have a, listeners will be tuning in now. Yeah, can we have a jingle, Steve, for um, Knob of the Week? For, you know, I think it was quite Stocks good. and shares, stocks and shares, stocks and shares, and your shares and stocks. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a working project. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So it needs a bit of work. Like, I think I was about a bit of a key there, so yeah, I'll work on okay. it. Uh, so um, as far as we, uh, do, you know what I, I did say on Twitter. Listen, have a bit of patience. You know, we are. I think I've talked about Paul Hill actually on the on the Friday podcast, but the UK micro cap, small cap space has been in a pretty much a bear market for a pretty eight nine months, mm. and. He said, if you, and he said, and I, I've said this before, if you look at the great financial crash, you know, 2008, 2009, the, it didn't really happen until late 2008. But the micro caps, the small caps, started going down in 2007, pretty much a year earlier. So they go into it quicker, and they rallied. And when, it, when the FTSE hit the bottom, all the big caps did, the micro caps were already rallying. So I think, I don't know when it's going to happen, you know, and I keep saying this, I don't know when it's going to happen, but the micro caps, oops, sorry, windy pops. Right. Um, the micro caps and small caps will start a rally before uh, the big caps do. Uh, and that's why you know, everything's at the moment is bearish, isn't it? You couldn't get more bearish, could you? If you think, look at the things around us is happening, right? You've got like, uh, first of all, was, um, you know, Putin. Putin. Vladimir Putin. Vladimirovich. His yeah. name, have you seen his name? It's like, right. his, his name is Vladimir. Vladimirich, Putin. 
Right. Why, what, isn't it, is, wouldn't his parents think, you know, I think that's, well, that's why. That's why he's got picked on in school, I think. That's why he's such right. an idiot. Because <laughs> his okay. name is Vladimir Vladimirich Putin. Wouldn't his parents say, do you know what the first name is quite similar to the second name? And then we need a middle name, Vladimirich. <laughs> you know, his name is Vladimir. <laughs> I, I like Vladimir so much, I want to give him a second name, but a little bit longer, it sounds very similar, mm. Vladimirich. Um, but no, so we got that worry, mm. uh, sorry, that's the, the, the nuclear war where America's getting involved, is it yep. World War Three? In fact, Monty started getting worried last night about World War Three, and I was explaining what was happening, mm. and he said, but why are they going to attack us? I said, they're not going to attack it, us. So what do you mean, Takis? He said, you said they're all around us. I said, no, Ukraine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was UK. Ukraine? He said, it's a UK, I thought it said. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I said, okay. he was getting, he was starting to cry about it. I said, no, Ukraine. I, I thought he'd be getting excited because that would mean more power cuts. <laughs> I know, yeah, but it's, you know, it's, it may bomb it may fall on his head. So um, mm. I said, no, UK. I didn't say why he was getting so upset. I said, M- 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 so not okay. UK, U- Ukraine, not UK. And, you know, I said, Ukraine is thousands of miles away. Don't worry about it. And uh, so World War Three, impending World War Three, never happened. We know that. He's done it before. Um, and uh, you've got, you know, inflation and you've got the Fed uh, and central banks rising interest rates and uh, because inflation is very high. You know, that stuff. So, and they're also they're reducing their bond buying program, which re- re- reduces liquidity. There's so much worry out there at the moment, mm. you know. So you're thinking, actually, to actually invest now is a bit crazy. No. It's not. That's what this the market. Is the time. Yeah, yeah, that's what the market wants you to think. You know, they want you to think it's crazy. The people like Buffett, who sits on piles of cash, you know, thrones of cash, at times mm. like this, he's now starting to dribble it in. <laughs> it's not a nice <laughs> thought, is it? <laughs> at that age, you you know, you've got to forgive he's him. Dribble. You've got to forgive him at that age. Mm. But um, you know, he, he won't start to pass up dri- He's dribbling in his throne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sitting on his throne of cash, dribbling it in. But uh, no, this is the time. When, like you said, what is what's the big saying? Buy when there's blood on the streets. <laughs> That's a big. That is a big saying. Buy, yeah. buy when others are fearful and be, or is it greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm. um, but yeah. literally, when there's blood on the streets, and it literally is with Ukraine at the moment. Uh, but that's the time to start buying. And I think this won't last long. I mean, the economists are saying now they see peak inflation in April, uh, around about topping out maximum 8% and then H2 going down. But, of course, markets look ahead when they can. But, well, I was going to say, with the, the Russian crisis and inflation and all these you know, these factors, do you, do you think that all of that stuff is now priced in? Or yeah, is that... exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, OK. That's, what... but we're all clinging to that hope, aren't we? And I thought, your, you know, your survey, you know, will he invade Russia... Well, you know, 70% say no. Oh, sorry, will you invade Russia? Will you invade Ukraine? Uh, 70% say no. And you think, well, yeah, but the majority of those people, your followers, are, are private investors who are hoping he won't. Because yeah, that, yeah, yeah. if he actually did, it probably would take another knockdown, wouldn't it? Yeah, but why, why not? Just, I mean, the thing is, who else is he going to take out there? Just let him get on with it. Mm. Why get involved assuming with it? it is priced in, then, that, uh, you know, that would be great if the uh, if it is priced in and then he doesn't invade. That would be even better. So uh, yeah. yeah. So first and foremost, uh, I mean, um, you've got to t- uh, someone to tell. You, I was listening to the radio. This is quite clever, really, because they've now stopped tier one uh, golden visas, haven't they, into the UK? So if you're an investor, foreign investor with two million to invest in the UK, you get a visa. I didn't know this. Uh, is, is, is it, country. Yeah, but it's, it's, no, in, in the UK, if you want to get, get, get a, you can come and live in in, in the UK. Yeah, but it's million. open to any country, though. Yeah, any country, no. Yeah, but they've stopped now. They've stopped it, they're, and, and they're cutting down on Russians especially. But it's, do you know what? It comes down to like, it's all about money, you know? Even Prince Andrew, like, he's guilty. We know he's guilty, right? But he can pay for his own justice, or his mother can, you know? And I said, mm. you know, if you were, a, of course, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get the same publicity if you were in a royal, if you were in a prince. Oh, he's a prince, is he? Yeah, oh, he's looking at me. But, um, mm. you know, if you're a normal... Uh, 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 I'm not a lawyer, but I think you've got to add something to that statement you just said. <laughs> it's something like, he, potentially, he may well be guilty. Well, hang on. Probably, he didn't do the know. crime. He never met the woman. He paid 12 million. What for? That's not an admission of guilt. That's oh, nice, no, I, exactly. He's but, just a nice guy. But if, if he was innocent, I, I, I'm taking this to court. Let's see what the judge decides. Cool. Um, so I'm saying paying her off is an admission of guilt. He's paid okay. her off. That's what he's done. Well, right. But, you know, you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't have a, a rich mummy 
who basically the royals, why people respect the royals is because their ancestors raped, killed and stole more land than our ancestors. And now we respect that. <laughs> we st- we, they wave at us in the balcony. Oh, look, they killed our ancestors, stole our land. We, yeah. We've got to respect that. Fantastic. And now <laughs> they great, take money. In defeat. Yeah, yeah. Now, now they take money off by tax and everything, and they get away with sex crimes. It's fine. It's lovely. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. That okay, is bring, not. Bring that, it is, back. On, that is not the, 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 the princes and princesses you see in Disney, is it? <laughs> sex offenders. <laughs> uh, anyway. So. <laughs> Uh, where was it by? Was it? But no, so, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The money. It's charming. Yeah. yeah. Um, money. Not where we charming. We at there? We at money. We at, uh, uh, stocks and shares uh, being priced in the current. I must admit, this week, because it was earlier in the week, I'm not sure yeah. about everyone else, but there was two days. So was it on Wednesday? I think it was when um, Biden said uh, that he thinks maybe, he made a, a reference that maybe Russia might not attack and I think my portfolio went flying through the roof. And the next day went a bit yeah, more. Yeah, that's it. And oh, that's it. Yeah, good, good, Steve. Thanks for bringing it around. So Steve's like the producer, isn't he? he yeah, it is on. it priced in? That's where we're going. So I lost yeah. the track. Uh, I, I not only lost track then, but Pete did as well. <laughs> yeah, so... You're welcome. Um, so, yeah, no, is it priced in? Yes, it is, I think. Because you saw that rally, um, you know, just when they said, oh, they're pulling troops out. That's it. There's reports, the troops are pulling out. And the ra- it rallied. Now... If they have evidence, and it's going to happen, he's not going to be hanging. The troops are going to be hanging around there for ages. Are they going to be what? Another couple of weeks, maybe? They can't stay there forever. You know, just saying, oh, look how big our weapons are, guys. Bigger than your weapons, yeah. And we got more weapons, and they're bigger, and we got nicer yeah. kit. They can't do that forever. And so when they start pulling out, there's evidence. You know, there's some. He's already winning. You know, on the on the price of oil and gas. Right. So. When he so he's after he's after back down. You know, oh, you see, everyone's uh, he's probably looking through the papers, isn't he? Look at him on the front page of every newspaper in the world. Fantastic. Um, so he's already winning. So he just pulls out. It will rally. And also, from an economical point of view, I, I don't know if you saw this, but the price of oil was up ninety five bucks a barrel, pretty much on that day they were pulling out. It dropped to ninety three bucks. Only two dollars, but it started dropping. And when that starts to happen, of course that affects inflation uh, in a positive way because it brings inflation yeah. down because so everyone uses oil and gas. So, um, yeah, so you, you'll have that play into that. And let's be honest, before April, that's going to happen, isn't it? And, and in the Northern Hemisphere, it gets warmer in April. You use less, um, less heating in oil and gas anyway. I don't know, I don't yeah. know how much, but I mean, yeah, so I think um, I, these worries can go away very quickly and it can turn on a dime. Like you see, that rally that happened <coughs> can happen very quickly, very quickly indeed. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any thoughts on the market, this week, boys? I'm going to look up some. I'm going to find some content here because I, I, not some content, but the, the <laughs> oh, content, that last. The, no, the content. I mean, I was looking yeah. for. Hang on. Um, right. But uh, any thoughts on the markets uh, this week? Um, in fact, uh, you know, Steve made a nice observation. Peter, your observation, please. Okay. Um, well, I was going to say that I, you know, I felt a little bit of a rally in the portfolio, a little bit, which was nice just to see some rises, consecutive days, just yes. rising. I, I mean, not massively, but um, and that's why I was sort of thinking. Are we kind of around a bottom, really? Are we kind of, you know, a lot of the fear is now priced in and it's, um, it'd be nice to see a rise from here in the portfolio. But I think we, I probably speak for most people, uh, if we're, if they're followers of us and, and a lot of the stocks that we talk about, just waiting for news on a lot of these stocks now, aren't we? So it's just, um, yeah, yeah. it's just a, a game of patience, really. Well, um, I don't know if you saw news out on the stocks we own, Trufin. Um, yeah. It's good that, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, it's a small bit of news, <clears throat> but I mean, quite significant, I thought, because, uh, let me just find the, the, the news here, but, um, <clears throat> so, the Anders, director. yeah, Anders Christian mm. Wilhelmsson um, has become a non-executive director. Now, that's quite significant, because he's from uh, the family office or the family investment firm called Watrium, and they are generational investors. They invest for years and years and years, and uh, they actually founded the Royal Caribbean Cruises. I don't know what they're doing in, 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 in the, where they are in Scandinavia for the Royal Caribbean, but they founded that. And the family alone are worth two billion. And yeah, uh, wow. they invest big chunks in, in, in not Scandinavia. They're, they're, now, they're not, not into, you know, actively into cruise liners. They are a private investment firm and they focus on long-term ownership of global financial portfolio. Like I said, they own 21%, the biggest holder of Truefin. And also they backed a, a company called CMR Medical, which has just broken a record for raising the biggest amount of money um, in a 
and the private fundraising, they're all about med tech and all that stuff. So they back, uh, and that's, that's now become a, a, a unicorn, a billion pound valuation. And um, and if you look at Ken Wooten, and it, so, so director, sorry, he's become a non-executive director. Uh, Ken Wooten, who's um, managing director of Gresham House, which is a hedge fund, fund manager, fund manager I mean, mm. um, they also own some truth in, they took part in the, in the placing. It wasn't a, a fundraise placing. It was where Aragras, a fund, had shut down, and so they just placed the shares with other institutional owners. Now, Ken knows his stuff, of course. He wouldn't be managing director of Gresham House. He didn't know his stuff. And he said, there are four parts to Truefin. He said, we believe three of the four businesses could be exited for the market cap of Truefin each on their own. So each one of those businesses. Yeah, wow. He's talking about Satago, Oxygen, Virtus. He said, each one of those are worth... What, 65, 70 million? Um, mm-hmm. And then he said, and then you've got Playstack, which I'm really excited about. It's a very fast growth story. So he thinks um, Stargo will be spun out, probably bought by Lloyd or somebody else, or someone else. Um, Oxygen will, Virtus will, and then it'll just be then Playstack, which is a very exciting gaming thing on its own. So, um, yeah, and, and, and uh, chatting with James, the CEO um, on LinkedIn. He's very excited about um, Anders coming on board, mm-hmm. and uh, he said he wants it to be a, he, he wants it to be um, a unicorn, Trufin. So um, yeah, I, I genuinely think. I mean, I mean, James came on the podcast a while back. He said about Satargo and Lloyd's. Um, it, this deal is going to get done with Lloyd's. It's, it's going to get done. It's, I don't know when it's going to get done. Early, early this year, but it'll get done. And I think Lloyd's will probably make an offer with them as well. But. Uh, it's very clever. They're not exclusive to Lloyd's, you know. So they are. Yeah. He said we we are actively talking. We have in very advanced talks with other companies. And I said, who are these companies? He said, well, I can't name the companies. I said, what I've what I've heard of them. Yes, they are household names, uh, you know, globally recognised. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah. big companies as well. So um, Truefin is a bit of a quiet. And the share price hasn't really dipped back that much, has it? I, I'd like to no. even their big sell off. It's been staying, you know, sort of, uh, you know. Level bevels, even Stephen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and obviously, um, you know, the who was it at Gresham House? Um, and Ken, good old Ken. Ken, yeah. Ken, saying that each could be spun out, you know, for a mm. market cap of so, i.e., it could the, the overall could be four times the current value. Um, I mean, he's always going to talk a good game and talk it up, isn't he? But yeah. even if they were, you know, half that, that that's still a, mm. a nice double from where we are here, and mm. you could kind of. By the sounds of it, a lot of things going in the right direction. It yeah. is just a case of hold on, be patient. Well, you know, Satar goes in um, invoice financing, and I think if if interest rates go up and businesses struggle a little bit, you know, yeah. and in, inflation, invoice financing will really do well, you know, because it's about yep. businesses struggling to pay invoices or get or struggling to get paid from bigger companies, and so they need more cash flow, and that's what they do. They loan you that that cash flow, and they um, you know you pay an interest rate on that yeah. you get the cash flow so you don't go under because you know, we, we all know these big companies sometimes have dragged their heels on paying invoices so that'll do very well I think um, yeah so I'm, 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 I'm really bullish on Truefin it's one of those ones that's um, it's, it's a little bit under the radar yeah. and uh, it's hard to get the, a grips with because generally I don't like investing companies it's not an investing company it's a holding company different thing in fact yeah. can you tell me what the difference is between an investing company and a holding company Steve or Peter Steve, you take this one. What was that oh, noise? Um, what was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> so, what, I heard no, is that you, that Steve? Was Steve, he's sat on his throne of you meant, uh, Can you tell me this is a holy company? That was like being in class, oh, wasn't personally. it? Personally. That's like being in class at school when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. And he said, Martin! <laughs> 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 yes, you were you paying attention? No. no. Um, yeah. So, any uh, ideas, Steve? Holding company and an investing company. Oh no, I don't know. Any um, idea, Peter? Uh, I'm well, having well, the dark. The ho- uh, holding company is the uh, like it would be the majority owner. Of a company, isn't it? So the overall company yeah, or a yeah, company yeah. of a number yeah. of companies, yeah. owner of a number of companies, mm. the investment company are, well, shareholders, effectively. Yes. So, um, uh, yeah, Truefin pretty much own those four companies. 
Yeah. Sort of, they, 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 obviously, and I think it's pretty much 100% in all. In one of them, I think it's, I think it's virtual 50%, but they are the majority holder. Um, mm. So basically, they are they hold them. They get, let them get on with what they're doing. If, if, you know, so Berkshire Hathaway is like a holding company, you know? So Warren yeah. Buffett's vehicle, it owns all these companies. It doesn't, it's not hands-on in the management stuff. But you know they they own the shares and all those companies. Now, an investing company, I never get involved in investing companies. I, I've missed out on a few of them, but um, but generally they just hold shares mm. in companies. And they don't. They're not the majority stakeholder. They generally hold about three to five percent. And I think it's pointless doing that because if an yeah. invest, and they, and they hold quite a few of them as well. So they hold you know five, ten companies. And thinking, well, if you look at it, for example, if you you know allocate ten percent of your portfolio to an investing company. And that yeah. investing company owns ten companies. It's only going to be as good as, as the average company that they the startup that they invested in. Uh, but you know, in any one of those companies, if they got ten percent of that company, uh, of those ten companies that invested, in, you only own one percent of the investing company. So it's ten percent of ten percent, isn't it? So it's pathetic. You get no exposure to underlying assets. Whereas with holding companies, they actually own the companies. So um, yeah, so I, I prefer that. So sort of the. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what I like about it. So, uh, does that make sense, Steve? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. What, uh-huh. are you, what are you doing, Steve? You seem like you're very distracted. <laughs> He's just watching telly or whatever. Steve? Steve? What, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. This very seconds. Yeah, so he's even, just, he's even, Keep even that question throws him. What, yeah. uh, what am I doing? Yeah, what are you doing, Stephen? Do you know, like the roots that come out of a sweet potato? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've just right. pulled them out of a sweet potato. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a million years would I have come up with that <laughs> answer that that sort of seems to No, no, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Not in a million mm-hmm. years. There we go. Well, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Sweet I suppose in a million years I yeah. probably would have. Posted. Sweet potato. That was a good branding experience, wasn't it? You know, you get your potato and you got your sweet potato, which is nice, isn't it? But they haven't done as well as a standard potato... But you'd think they would do with the name, it's not just a sweet. potato, it's a sweet potato. Mm. Mm. I think they, kids, uh, kids would go for that more, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And are mm. they are they sweet, though, really? Not really. Oh, sad lady. Oh, I, I, just, I, I was laughing my head off. I was driving down from South Wales uh, on because um, I'd been up with my father and uh, that song came on. Who's that lady? The lyrics, I want to see that. Billy Joel. Uh, no, no, it's not Billy, Billy Joel. Billy Ocean. No. Billy it's, Ocean. The, it's the Island Brothers. You were singing, who's that lady? No, who's that lady? Who's that lady? And this is beautiful lady. Who's that lady? Lovely thought, lady. I thought you who's that Billy lady? Ocean. Real yeah, fine lady. Who's that lady? <laughs> he says, like, wow. And I, I thought that was quite inappropriate. In this day and age, you know? Yeah. He says, who's that lady? Beautiful lady. Who's that lady? You're Lovely good. lady. Who's that lady? Real fine lady. <laughs> Whoa! Back off, fella! You don't know her! No. You are coming yeah. on a bit strong here, okay? I don't know who she is. <laughs> no, but, yeah, but he keeps saying he's laying it on the thick there, isn't he? Calm it down, fella. Okay, you find her attractive. <laughs> She's a beautiful Give lady, a lovely shower. lady, a real fine lady. Yeah, <laughs> Whoa. Right. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And, and it's more than one. It's the IC brothers, so it's like all of them there. <laughs> yeah. like, they're like, standing there. Oh. <laughs> they're standing there. How many are there of the Isley Brothers? I know it's like uh, it's, it's like uh, quite a few of them, and um, they're all you know. A lady walking past, and there's one, two, yeah. there's one, two, three, four, five, six guys there looking at a lady, and one saying, cool. "Who's that lady?" That's quite intimidating, isn't it? It is yeah. intimidating, yeah. and I find it quite even though it's sung in a quite upbeat, you know, jolly manner. I didn't, that is quite intimidating, quite, you know, really. Like, yeah, you tell your daughter, like, yeah, don't go down that road. That's yeah, where the yeah. Isley Brothers live. So be, yeah. And then you, walk, you, so, yeah. you walk past their house and you'll feel yeah. really bad, you know. And, uh, yeah, I can, imagine some, uh, I can imagine some wolf whistles going on as well in the background. You know? Yeah. Who's that a leader? Who, you, 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 you wouldn't mind it though. They're singing harmony. It would, it would ease the blow a bit, I think. Um, you know. Would you go down? Would you go down the alley with the? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Hey there. Oh, he's back. Hello, Justin. What happened there? <laughs> There's so much sexual tension for that Ice yeah. Brothers song that it blew the fuse. 
No, wow. what happens is I'm in my little office here. <laughs> so and you're I'm not... a power cut then? No, I, yeah, yeah, Mondi's out with his torch. No, <laughs> no, um, what happens is... Mondi's turned the switch box off. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, 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 same thing. I'm in a little office, though. So it's half a converted garage, isn't it? So one half is me, um, one half is a garage. There's a, there's a tumble dryer in the garage. If I put my heaters on, my old heaters on, and Megan puts the tumble dryer on, knocks the power off. I said, you can't do that. You know, can't put yeah. the. Cause I've got a small heater and a big heater. I've got both of them on, it's a bit cold. Right. But then um, I've turned one of the heaters off now. But um, anyway, sorry about that. What, what do you uh, think uh, happened did there? That lock, did that knock the whole house off then, or was it just the garage? No, just the, just the garage. Um, just the garage. The garage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's wide property, Steve, but you know. So, um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, we went from sweet potatoes into the ICT brothers. <laughs> mm, <I know. laughs> that was good, that. I like that. Yeah. I like Who's that. the lead? Right, yeah, anyway. Uh, stocks and shares. Yes, let's go back to that. So, um, truth in good. Um, I've invested in a new company, boys. Right. And uh, yeah. obviously the sheer pickers investment club know about it uh, because ah. that's exclusive. You know, any stock ideas I have there, I share with the club. They can do a month of research exclusively. If you want to sign up, go to sharepickers.com. Um, you know, go to, the, go to the FAQs. You'll see what it's all about. But it's, um, there's a video on the website. There's a video as well. So it's a, but it's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth your money, boys, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I get a lot of value mm. out of it. In fact, I've got a lot of uh, people signing up. And right. uh, I've had a couple of technical glitches. I don't understand how... They can have technical. No, I shut them the site down for like six months, and I said I'll be reopening, you know, on February fifteenth to February March, uh, fifteenth mm. of March. I mean, and um, you know, it, it's some glitches. It rather than just you know opening it back up, it just it was glitches and the payment thing was good. But I've been inundated literally every time I look at my e- inbox. I got, I got, you know, a page full of unread emails. Oh, I'll go through them all. So I got pages and pages. So I've had a bit of that. But um, so I haven't really gone nuts on promoting it on LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook because um, I'm inundated with the emails. There's too many emails. Right. So the hell. What's the most you've ever had in your inbox when you've gone on holidays, gone back, and you've looked at your email? Mm. And you go, well, do you know what I hate? Megan never reads. I always read and clear my emails. If I see yeah, a little red number on it, yeah. maybe it's like 3,000 in a yeah. Hotmail account. That is so annoying. And I go in yeah. there and select them all, mark as red, and she gets really annoyed. So I needed yeah. some of those. I said, well, why don't you just go through them then? What's the most yeah. you've had? Do you have a lot of emails, Steve, Pete, at all? Yeah, only yeah. Only on when I as I said you used to go on holiday from work, but uh, personal now I don't know I can't stand it. And same as you, if there's a red dot that needs to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. What used to be bad was we work at Capital. They used to get loads from people that's not even relevant. You know, different departments and they, yeah. If you work for a big organisation, they've got to sort that out, haven't they? So I suppose they've got a Slack or Teams or whatever they do. Uh, anyway, the company is Sal. Dun, dun, dun. Space and people. What do they right. do? It's a tiny, it's a micro, micro, micro cap. Um, and I see it as a very good recovery place. So basically, they are commercialization space specialists. Easy for me to say. Uh, mm. They place brands, businesses, and promoters seeking space for retail promotions and brand experience in shopping centers and travel hubs. So, you know, whenever you go, I didn't realize this. Whenever you go, like, you know, a train station, like the big train station, you see big promotions by big brands doing, giving away lots of ice creams or whatever, something like that. They rent that space off, not the, the, the uh, people that own the space, by people like Space and People, you know? Uh, in fact, they yeah. own... I think I, I can't looking at it is loads over a hundred spaces there are most of the train station spaces um, mm-hmm. you know all the big shopping centre spaces so anytime you see even those even those little guys selling mobile phone covers in the middle of shopping centres you know in between the shops the temporary shops thing they own that bit you know and I'm thinking wow so they took a massive knock of course with Covid because there's no footfall uh, yeah. but now they're bouncing back like crazy and uh, what I thought was news of interest here was that if you, if you go back, the new CEO come in and all that stuff, uh, and uh, the previous CEO, they're, they're trying to expand too fast. They tried to go to India and elsewhere, and the costs went up. And they brought a new um, CEO, in Nancy Cullen. And because of the, the COVID you know, contraction, it's quite good for businesses, you know, sometimes, because they have to tighten their belts. And, you know, in a, in a, in a growing economy, when the credit is free-flowing, People tend to take on a lot of people, don't they? They're, they're a bit more you know, lax about hiring people and their costs because there's lots of credit flowing around. But when you get a downturn and you've got to survive, you really rein it in and you've got to you know, get rid of a load of people, pretty much who are just not doing stuff, just you know, looking at 
the Isley Brothers on YouTube or something. And <laughs> yeah. uh, saying, yeah, what are you doing? He said, I like this song, it's great. Uh, well, do, do some work, do some work, yeah? Yeah, do some work, yeah? And I said, in fact, what, what, are you actually, what did we actually hire you for? I don't know. Well, neither do I. Okay, so, so, um, so they get, people like that, they get rid of. So the costs are cut, and, and then when they start to expand again, um, you find their margins are better, their profits are better. Uh, but anyway, they have now have a bigger and more extended portfolio than pre-pandemic. They're based in Germany and the UK, and uh, they've opened up. And, and what I like about them, I'm doing a quick, quick video on them, it's just I invest them because they have growth, they have value. And uh, they are literally 2.6 million market cap. That's all they are. They've got an EV mm -hmm. there. They've got a little bit of debt, but a C-bills, this government-backed. You know, Loans, uh, those ones they have COVID loans. So the, the enterprise value about three point five million, something like that. Um, but they've got sort of cash of one by three five million. Uh, obviously, it's part of the sort of loan. But mm -hmm. if you look at that, they they did in two thousand nineteen. This is pre COVID. They did seven point seven million in revenue, and they were profitable. Only a small profit, but they made um, seventy one thousand uh, before tax. They haven't raised funds, raised money via equity since two thousand thirteen. Thanks to the Share Pickers Investment Club, someone looked into that. Um, and so they're saying that uh, venues are reopening, of course, um, from May in, 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 in the UK and thing. Good signs of recovery. Agreement of multi year extensions, the retail agreements in Germany. Uh, portfolio of venues significantly larger. I like that. Significantly larger than pre pandemic, resulting in opportunities as business recovers are positive. Now, if you look at the first half of the year, it's a bit like a skate punt, really, when they chose the skate rooms. The first half of the year, 2021, they couldn't have been open. You know, they opened, I think, in uh, mid-April. Uh, so they got mid-April, May, June. That's it for the first half of the year. That's all they had. They did 1.1 million in revenue. Okay? So, you know, oh, hang on. If you work that out, yeah. that's about, what, just under 500 million a month. And then they came up with the training update uh, recently, uh, which was they did, they're going to do 4.5 million this year. That's already bigger than if you, if you value a company is profitable, it should be on you know at least two times sales. You know, so you think okay, if you do four point five million, they're profitable. It should be nine million market cap, really, really. Um, yeah. Even if you do these are even even one time sales, but uh, so if you look at it, they did um, four point five million for the full year twenty twenty one. Take off the one point one million for each one. Look at just H two alone, and you divide it on a monthly basis. They're doing about five hundred. 88k per month now just if you, and you remember december there, there was restrictions and also people were still working from home you know a lot of the time through 2021 so footfall was massive now if you look at like um all the all the retail stats and the, the footfall stats they've grown every week recently um so even if you do though five that that sort of extrapolate that h2 on a monthly basis they will do 6.8 million this year you know and they're literally they're two point six million market cap. They got yeah. cash, they're fine. But I think they do a lot more than that because December was very very soggy. Because you know Boris and everyone said work from home, don't go out. You know Omicron mm. is around. So everyone said you know the hospitality leisure sectors. That's their biggest month, December. It's one of their biggest yeah. busiest months. And yet it was an awful December in twenty twenty one. So they did you know like I said uh, three point four million over the H two even with a really bad December. But they'll do 6.8 million, even if they average that out. So I think they do, they'll probably do over 7 million. And I'm thinking they'll probably be profitable. Yeah. So I like a lot. I think this is, could be quite an easy double. Um, I don't know how far, how far they can go. I mean, they, 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 you know, they've done a lot more revenue than that. But um, I, I like it. There's a new CEO in there. Uh, they've cut their costs. They're going to say annualized savings of £1 million a year. And this is a small micro cap. I think it could do really well. Um, it's an odd situation where Gresham switched over to Harwood. I think I don't know what happened with Gresham, but Harwood just wanted to get out the company because even though they held three million shares to them, it's like three hundred grand. It's not even worth you know for a fund to be holding three hundred grand of shares. It's pointless to them. You know, even if it doubles, it's not going to make a lot of difference to them. They they have several hundred million and assets in the management, so they just it's you know exited the business. It went down by like thirty percent in one day. So I just started buying. Mm. There's, there's, and most of the time, you get a seller in, the, seller in there. It's nothing to do with the company. It's just internal, you know, sort of management at, at the fund. So I thought I started buying it crazy. As you know, I'm now a significant shareholder of the company. Yes. How, uh, how much? What percentage? Over five percent. Oh, okay. 
Because I just think um, um, I, I just think there's a, a recovery going on. Yeah, it's bound to be in retail from where we were. You've got now a leaner company with more venues, new CEO at the at the <laughs> helm. I just like it. And I think if, if you look at um, if you follow their go on LinkedIn and all that stuff, you'll see the amount of promotions they're doing. It's growing day by day, and so I just think uh, yeah, I don't I don't know you know how far they can grow um, and how big they can get. Uh, but um, I'm just saying it's you must you must be skimming off a lot of your other stocks then to go that no, much into it. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No, but it's it's tiny amount of cap saves. It's not a huge amount. No, no huge okay. amount of money because it's, it's a tiny. It's literally mm-hmm. what's what's okay. Uh, do, do the math, Steve, on your answers only. Okay, what is five percent? Oh, no, don't do that. You know I can't do that. Yes, math. you can. Come on, Steve. Into the, what's five percent? I'll give it Five percent, two point five million. In fact, two point six four million. What's five percent of two point five million? Gee, I can't even work that out. Yes, well, you do, can. Always do, do ten. Do ten percent first. Move the decimal point. What's 10%? Yeah. So 260... Yeah. Th- two, two, uh, 20, so what, 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 what is it? So, say it's 2.5 million. What's 10% yeah. of that? Tenth of that? Just move the decimal point. So, yeah, so 0.25 million, yeah. What is 0.25 yeah. million? Mm-hmm. In, 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 in normal terms. What's, wait, well, how would you say that? You oh, sorry, say, all right, all right. So, to, uh, 250, is it? Yeah, 250,000. That's, that's 10%. What's 5%? Half that. All right, so one, one, 175. Is that right? No. no. What's half of 250, Steve? 250. What is half of that? What is half of that? What is half of 225, sorry. There it is. Good, good boy. So, so, yeah, so peanuts. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but I, I think a lot of people will probably. I'm disagree. joking. I'm joking. There's not peanuts at all. But um, no, I just think it's um, it's it's a it's a it's a worthy play, you know, of a reopening of the economy that's uh, going to get yeah. full, you know, because people always love to go shopping and stuff, and you know, and even it, so, there's all different kinds of things. So even you know, we get to, um, it's not only sort of branded, but you know, you get these little like coffee. Have you seen these? Quite popular. These little coffee, old fashioned World War Two. Vans, you know, and they sell yeah. coffee at the back there. So even those things, they own the land, well, not own the land, but they, they lease the land off the big. You know, so property. where are they skimming their money for profits? Are they taking it off the um, the the landlords of the shopping centres, or is it coming off the no the, the, shops? Yeah, the shops, because of course the the, the shopping centres they can't be bothered managing, can they? That the because the, um, some of these. Promotional things will only last for like a, a week when they it'll be at the shopping centre. So I saw recently um, Beyond Meat did one with them. You know, so Beyond Meat were in a popular yeah. sort of London train station and asking people to taste their burgers and so there. So, but then, so it's space yeah. and people I own or lease the pitches. Is that right? And That's then they... all, all the all the uh, all the areas that are not yeah. the, the the hard fixed shops. Yeah. So yeah. any space inside a shop because they realise when they built these shops there's a lot of space in there. And in fact, I came to Cardiff last weekend. I took, back, let me phone it. I took a picture of uh, St. David's Centre there. It was in there. Was people mm. wearing masks. I didn't realise we were wearing masks, but I was one of the only ones. Right. Part of me felt a bit rebellious, you know. I don't want a mask. Ooh, stupid. Doesn't even work. Um, but um, I was in there. And so on. my wife was in, um, what's, the, what's it called? Uh, Zara on the first floor. And I was just hanging around there. I won't, be, okay. I won't be five minutes, she said. 55 minutes later, I'm still there walking around. I even went in Apple, looked around, took some pictures. But I took a picture of from the first floor and I could see there was Cup, which was like an iced tea company. There was like a cat food promotional thing uh, called Welcome to Republic of Cats. There was a um, creme fraiche crispy donuts made freshly, three of those in 100 yards on the bottom floor. So those kind of people... You know, there's two promotional ones there. Um, and in fact, really odd, we walked past... Is, Steve, are you aware, do you, have you heard of Cup? Like, uh, they do teas, all different flavoured teas. And in fact, they've got that uh, a, a fixed shop in St Mary Street as well, I think. And yet, the one in St David's Centre, was people were queuing for it. We walked past the one in St Mary Street, no one was queuing for it. So you can see why companies, little brands, would take out spaces like this, cheaper, you know, flexible... Temporary, just get footfall and brand recognition, you know. So, um, yeah, so those spaces like that, of course, if you don't put anything in them, and that can earn lots of money, can it, for, for like um, 
into and all that stuff. So um, yeah, they're not, they're not into anymore. They've, they've gone bust by other people. So but within those, so within those shopping centres, for example, they own those those locations, those pitches where they, they then lease out to yeah, cup or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they lease out I just don't understand why these shopping centres. If there's so much money involved in it, why are they like lease out to another company? Why don't they hire someone to like, look a, out a, after those? No, things? it's a different business model, isn't it? I mean, yeah. You, you got, yeah, but why not hire these, a no, different? But, like, no. If there's so much money to be made in it, well, what? By, you know, hiring a new team that runs that department, you know, it's just like it's just another department. Again, it's like, no, it's, it's it's like outsourcing, isn't it? It's like it's any kind. It's like outsourcing. Mm. If, you, if you, you know, if if I'm like literally, you know, if my job is like, you know, for example, I've got a website and I, I'm, I'm making website traffic and all that stuff, and you know, I, I sell a product and stuff. I say, why not just learn to program? I think no, I'm not going to do yeah, that. It take me ages to do that. It's time and energy, or if I have to employ people to do it. it costs, yeah, you know, uh, so I just get someone who's good at programming to do knock me up his website or something. You know, so it's yeah, just that, outsourcing, okay. isn't it? The theory, the theory like yeah. I know what you mean, Steve. Like, yo, you just get a team to do that and a department and do that. But that's an overhead. Those people, they'll be ill. They'll, uh, they, you have to pay them holiday pay. You have to pay them sick pay. You have to pay them all this stuff, all that stuff. You have to pay them pension and all that stuff. It's yeah, yeah. a department you just don't want to have. Yeah. So you go, hold on, no, I'll just outsource that and get money in. And then that's somebody else's headache. And that yeah. company, you reckon they can do it. Go on then, crack on, fill your boots. But yeah, you're but paying no, me. No, you're I, paying I, me exactly. Mm. So they'll say, so a property developer, a big property developer, whatever, will say, listen, they're not getting any money for that land at the moment. To start mm. getting money for that land, it's like Pete said, they have to hire lots of people. It's an overhead for them. Whereas yeah. they can just go to space and people who've got the infrastructure, all the people. They say, yeah. okay, listen, you, you get people on that pitch and we'll take 50%, you take 50%, whatever it is. And otherwise, it's money they wouldn't have had and it doesn't cost them anything. There's no overhead, you know, for yeah. them at, at all. Mm. So um, yeah. it's, uh, it's good for them. It's a done deal. It's uh, good for them. It's good for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so certainly the valuation looks very attractive, doesn't it? I I have bought some, but I uh, I've just juggled around my fun corner and put some uh, in there instead. So well, well, put it this way, right? We, we we talk about companies being on a multiple of sales, right? When you're valuing any uh, company, if they are like um, you know established long term sort of blue chip companies, you, you value them on earnings or profits, a PE ratio. Um, when they're newer companies and they start generating sort of cash. There you do it on an EBITDA, and then when they're newer than that, and you do it on a, on a sales multiple, a revenue multiple, you know, like even even you know high tech flying companies like Kathy uh, Woods investing in the Ark Fund is tanking at the moment. You know she's investing in companies that are ridiculous multiples of their sales, like you know hundred times sales. This company right now, if they do seven million next year, they they they're right now on half of that. They're point five of one time sales so even if they get the one time sales they'll double so you know there's growth there because they'll grow from last year and the valuation is silly at the moment is no is you know they literally have to trade in line with their sales and that's it they'll double mm. um, i've accidentally muted pete pete unmute yourself mm. sorry about that pete hello Oh, he's just playing this. Why do you accidentally mute him? I don't know how I did that. Well, I was just putting something well, in the oven, so you... I just thought I'd, I'd mute myself, but I muted Pete for some reason. I didn't I'll know you, you could I, do that. Well, you so, some listeners would thank you for that, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, he just didn't like your answer, Pete, when you come mm. back at him with a good answer there. He just saw yeah. Pete is a cocky, mute him. cocky, arrogant idiot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what's going in the oven. It's a sweet potato, isn't it, Steve? The sweet potatoes are in the oven. Uh, right. What are you having with it, Steve? Um, I'm having some golden vegetable rice and some barbecue chicken. This is double Ooh. carbs. Yeah. yeah. So mm. hang on, you're having you having two sweet potatoes as well? No, just the one. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, I've I've um, diced it up into uh, wedges. Mm. Right, personally. Okay. Uh, anything else happening? Mm. So listen, um, I think you know. I, I said uh, Gfinity should be coming up with the results end of this end of this uh, end of this month. Would be quite good. Um, yeah. I'm hoping uh, you know it's. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 it's nice to get to see what they're doing because uh, mm. they, they don't do much news, which is quite good. But I mean, what's good though, their IT or their IP, which is the platform for esports companies to use, that's to be going live in the second half this year. So that'll generate almost the same amount of revenue as their you know, digital media company, so uh, digital media side. So that's good. Uh, yeah. Escape in as well. I think when we get some good figures from them, six months of boom, battle bar, boom, battle bar. Uh, do you see the share price dropped on Friday because the O2 roof yeah. has come off? Have you well, seen that? Pictures, yeah. Of, yeah. 
They're not mm. in the actual arena. They're right inside it. It's like, what are you mm. talking about, people? And, it, it, and people, oh, no, that's Boom Battle Bar. The O2 is shut for one day only, pretty much. And yet yeah. people panicked. The Pia Pants Brigade provide opportunities for other people, you know? Mm. Think mm. in years, not days and weeks, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, your investments will pay off, I think. Um, uh, would it be nice to get some updates? What else? Uh, uh, Biome, G Tech. Um, uh, have you got a sense of feeling? Uh, famous last words. I got a feeling that our, our stocks have sort of bottomed to a certain extent. They're not having big drop offs like they did previously. Well, I, back in the summer, they were dropping, you know? Uh, but now I feel like yeah. they are bumping around the bottom. So I think that theory that micro caps, small caps are, you know, go down fast quicker and then come up faster and recover faster. Yeah. We may mm -hmm. be seeing in the next month or so. We did uh, see the start of a recovery, I think. Um, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, one last thing. I mean, as I tell you, my father had a stroke, right? Uh, he yeah. had some stress with my mother who had some dementia. We've, you know, we've said for a while, mum needs to go into care. You can't look after her. She's uh, uh, and do all that stuff. Um, and then this is what happened on the Sunday. This is this, and, and, and you can look back at it, you've got to laugh at it to, because this, if you don't, you'll cry. So, my father got out of the shower and he couldn't move his leg, and he realized he was having a stroke because he's had two before. Um, and the more you have, the worse they get. And he realized, so he went to his bedroom and he said, Carrie, which is his wife, my mother, Carrie, get a mobile phone. I'm having a stroke. Get a mobile phone, quick. Get me a mobile phone. I need to call, you know, Nick or the hospital or something else, the ambulance. She went, what? Mobile phone? Yeah, downstairs. Get my mobile phone. So she went downstairs. Oh, okay. Okay, she's understanding. Understanding. And she came back up with a cushion. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to make a call on that? <laughs> Do me a favour, just smother me, yeah? Get it over with. <laughs> I know. That's right. awful, isn't it? That's, and yeah. that's exactly why we were saying for a long yeah. time, Dad, you know, next drug you have be quite dangerous. And you can't run a man, you can't care for it, but um, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of Dom Jolly, just oh, a cushion shaped no. mobile phone, you know? <laughs> and uh, it's, and oh. even, even then, there's a, a phone in the bedroom. Is it? Grab me that phone, landline phone there. And she's picking up everything apart from the phone, yeah. you know? So maybe maybe she thought he said foam. Yeah, 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 exactly. There we are. Yeah. That's very, it reminds me of um, that one thing with uh, Eric Malcolm, apparently, he had a heart attack. And he's been, oh, yeah. been rushed into hospital on yeah. a stretch, and he's been rushed in. And so it was, a, uh, it was an ambulance driver or something, you know, he's been rushed in. Eric Morecambe, oh, can I have your autograph, please? He's lying on a stretch, having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down yeah. Ball, yeah. Uh, anyway, boys, um, uh, good weekend last weekend, wasn't it? Uh, six, six, six Nations. And, uh, well, surprising win, wasn't it, for Wales? Good that. Hey! Hey! Yeah, that was. <laughs> mm. Hey? Yeah. It's, uh, that was good. Who did England beat? Uh, Italy mm. is the big the big guns. Um, I think we probably need to call the the podcast to, to a finish because Meg is just WhatsApp yeah. us saying, "I hope you guys are enjoying the husband and wife evening." Justin promised me yesterday. Oh, <laughs> time! <laughs> hey, time to get the Kit Kat and the condoms out. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, romance yeah. is getting a bit more expensive these days, but don't mind; it's worth paying for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Good. All right, boys. Bye -bye. Awesome. Nice weekend. <laughs> You're off, Nancy. Bye. Bye. The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter, and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.